Bob, I see so many other voices talking about origins out there, very powerful voices that, especially that our youth hear today. And I was impacted negatively, and those things filled my heart as a youth, and I knew what uh, the resultants of those were. Uh, and I watched my friends around me, uh, you know, their lives destroyed by that kind of philosophy. And I, I couldn't figure out why and how before I accepted Christ. And he filled that hole, and he also filled those needs, my questions about origins uh, as part of my salvation experience and led me to uh, other organizations such as ICR, mm -hmm. uh, AIG. I know Ken Ham personally now. He stayed in my home three times. Uh, and uh, those other great organizations and what they're trying to do is relevant to a person like me that did not have that origins uh, uh, place in my heart filled correctly. So let's talk about this worldwide flood that we read about in the book of Genesis. There are some that would say that it didn't take place. There are others that say, well, it was just a, a localized event. All sorts of ways to, to kind of explain that away. Again, from your geological perspective, you can see some things that have taken place with respect to the earth that can really validate what we read there in the book of Genesis. Well, in my book, I spent uh, a chapter on the fossil deposits. If we could talk yeah. about those oh, for a yeah. second. Yeah, because a lot of times the fossil record will be something that those that believe in the theory of evolution use to, to ex explain, quote-unquote, their theory. Yes. Well, the size and magnitude of them is, uh, you know, is so amazing and so awe-inspiring. For instance, in South Africa, there's a deposit called the Karoo. It's about five miles deep, and it covers 200,000 square miles, and it happened in one event. There's another one called the Selawix in India that runs 1,400 miles long. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and, and another in Alaska, uh, of course, the entire uh, north slope is one gigantic graveyard, and that graveyard extends all the way over to Sweden across the Bering Strait, uh, uh, containing the mammoths, uh, the, the uh, saber-toothed tigers, and a plethora of, uh, they say there's 66 species buried in that deposit alone. Uh, I, I quote uh, uh, several uh, older authors that found uh, in the Himalayas at the 14,000-foot uh, level uh, uh, mammoth remains all the way up into perpetual snow where you can't dig through the glaciers to find them. The same way in the Andes. So how do you explain, now they say there's one million fossil deposits just on the surface. There's more in the ocean beds. How do you explain that? Uh, how do you explain the coal deposits that have occurred all over the world? Things that I've worked in directly. Uh -huh. Uh, I, have a, I have my own set of maps in the book that I developed from many, many years of research I pulled together to show these things. So uh, we have to have answers. Uh, we can't accept uh, peat bogs. We can't accept local disasters uh, killing mammoths to 15,000 feet in the Himalayas and 12,000 in the uh, Andes. Uh, 